Okay, so now we're going to talk about the gene expression regulation in eukaryotic cells. There are lots of different things happening here to regulate the gene expression at many regulatory levels. So we have the genomic changes, we have transcription going on here, we have RNA processing. All these three processes are happening inside the nucleus. And then we have processes that happen outside the nucleus. So we're looking at translation and post-translational modifications to our product. Mutations can happen randomly. And if you have a change in the genetic code, you will have a change in the gene expression as well. So for example, if there is an enhancer that the gene is dependent on for expression, and that enhancer has a mutation, then yes, the gene expression is going to be changed as well. And then we have epigenetic changes. So these are the changes that are going to be reversible, but heritable. So what happens here, two things. So we have acetylation of histone tails and then also DNA methylation. So let's talk about the acetylation of histone tails. Remember how I said before that we have um, DNA in eukaryotic cells that wraps around the histones, and there are eight histones that make up a nucleosome. And then, as you can see, these histones have tails. And at the very end of these tails, we have an amino acid that sits there, and this amino acid is lysine, and it gives a tail a positive charge. And you know, naturally found DNA has a negative charge because of the oxygen in the backbone. So now we can see positive and negative. We have a strong ionic attraction. So imagine these little tails sort of wrapping around the DNA and sort of holding everything really nice and tight. So in that case, expression, it's not going to be easy because you need to be able to have access to the DNA to be able to express a gene. So it means we have to have chromatin remodeling uh, happen. And one way to do so is through those epigenetic changes. So this is a process of acetylation where we add acetyl group to the tail, we add it to the lysine, and then what happens then, the charge is removed. So this charge is neutralized and therefore these tails are going to loosen up and they sort of let go of DNA and now you will have an easier access to read the DNA code and therefore to initiate transcription. Another way to affect the gene expression is through DNA methylation. Um, so a methyl group is added to cytosine. You can see this is a simplified DNA molecule and here's your cytosine and it has methyl group and add it to it. So imagine if you have multiple, multiple cytosines and they all methylated, so that region of DNA would be silenced. So it'd be very hydrophobic, transcription factors would not be able to bind it, and therefore these genes would not be expressed in that particular region of DNA. However, as I said before, DNA methylation is reversible, so those methyl groups can be removed and then gene transcription can actually change. So, and environment plays a huge role in epigenetic modifications and therefore in gene regulation. I have a really cool example here how identical twins, um, they were babies, or identical twins, and they looked at their DNA methylation pattern. And at first they were exactly the same. And then years later, by age 50, when they checked their DNA again, they saw that the DNA methylation pattern, pattern was very, very different. So they were living in different environments and different genes ended up being expressed. And if you actually saw them, they didn't even look like twins or let alone they didn't even look like they were related. That's how much of the difference actually caused in the gene expression and therefore in the physical appearance of these people. And then also, um, there's a study that was done that talked about DNA methylate, methylation can actually promote transcription. So I'm not going to spend much time here talking about transcription factors, enhancers, alternative splicing, but yes, they all regulate gene expression, and we actually talked about them in a previous lecture. Um, a little bit of mention here about microRNAs. So microRNA can inhibit translation. So 
This is a diagram that shows you how you actually get it, but we're not going to be concerned about the details of this. What you have to understand here is that you have RNA, and I'm going to make a very simplified uh, mRNA here. So I'm going to say A U C A G. So this is, oh, that's a good looking G. Okay, G A. And we don't want this mRNA anymore. So that means we want to silence it. So you can actually produce microRNA and silence that by making a double stranded RNA. So what we're going to do here, we're going to make that mRNA, microRNA, and it's going to be U, A, G, U, C, U. And you can see now it's double stranded. So if you have your ribosomes right here trying to read this code, notice it's not going to be able to do it because it's not a single stranded RNA. So it means translation is repressed. So that's another way how we can actually interfere or change the gene expression and therefore the result of it. And very similar to microRNAs, we have another type of RNA, which is small interfering RNAs. We get it and we call that RNA interference. So we get that in different ways. We're not gonna be concerned here in our class, um, but yes, it can actually silence the RNA and you can see where we can use these um, interfering RNAs. Um, the last piece of information that I wanted to add here is you can also have post-translational modification so this is where you actually produce a protein, but this protein is no longer needed. So it means we can degrade it. We are tagging this protein with ubiquitin, which is a death tag. And then this protein is going to be fed into a proteasome. So this is an enzyme that's going to degrade it. And then we degrade the protein into peptides or individual amino acids, and we can use some of these components for recycling. Okay, so now here's a big question. Since we are finishing up talking about gene expression, here's a big question. How do cells with the same genes differentiate to perform completely different specialized functions? So what is the answer? Yes, if you said the answer is highly regulated gene expression, you are absolutely correct, high five. And I'm going to finish up our discussion with this beautiful quote. Uh, so here it goes. The greatest of all wonders of the material universe, the existence in a simple unorganized egg of the power to produce a definite adult animal. Mm, so good. So good. Biology is amazing. It's beyond, beyond amazing. It's so complex and yet so beautiful. I hope you appreciate that.